As the state now imposes tough new restrictions on thousands of local businesses to curb the spread of COVID-19, San Diego's mayor takes action. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Marcella Lee. I'm Carlo Chiquetto. Mayor Kevin Faulkner's new executive order allows restaurants to expand onto sidewalks and private parking lots while waiving the permit process. News 8's Richard Allen has more on that as well as what comes next in order to lift these new restrictions. Well, that's right. Restaurants like The Godfather here in Kearney Mesa taking advantage of the mayor's new executive order designed to give a boost to restaurants hit hard by the state's order to shut down indoor service for the time being. This is important to preserve people's jobs and to preserve public safety. While local restaurants can start their outdoor expansion onto sidewalks and private parking lots immediately, they still must follow all regulations and laws already in place, including the Americans with Disabilities Act. It's still got to be safe for people to walk down the sidewalk. The mayor stressed that as we move forward into this new dialed back phase, individual actions like wearing face coverings and maintaining physical distancing is critical to help bring down the spiking number of COVID cases, which triggered this partial shutdown in the first place. What we do tonight, what we do tomorrow, what we do next week uh, really will affect what happens next? And what is next? San Diego County must remain under these new restrictions, which also affect businesses like wineries, movie theaters, museums, and bowling alleys for at least the next three weeks. The rising case rate in San Diego, currently more than 138 positive cases per 100,000 residents, triggered this recent action by the state, which requires the rate to remain below 100. But even if we manage to get that rate under control by July 27th, the state is also monitoring a number of other metrics, including the testing positivity rate, the availability of ICU beds and ventilators, and the average number of COVID tests carried out daily. The state is also carrying out a number of enforcement actions through its strike teams of regulatory agencies to make sure businesses are complying. The governor earlier this week said those teams were busy over the recent holiday weekend. We had close to 6,000 in-person visits to bars and restaurants just from the Department of Alcohol Beverage Control. Also today, the County Board of Supervisors approved the distribution of $17 million in federal coronavirus aid. Those funds will now be allocated to businesses throughout the county that have been hit hard by the coronavirus pandemic. Back to you. Thank you, Richard. The city of Poway moved to help out some of the city's restaurants during the pandemic. It's a, a small step, but uh, could be huge. I see these businesses as family here in Poway. Tonight, Poway City Council members approved the purchase of new picnic tables to help support outdoor dining at Poway restaurants. The city plans to lease the tables to businesses until they can begin allowing customers to dine in again. City officials say the tables will be moved to local parks once the pandemic is over. Tonight, county officials report 578 new COVID-19 cases and 12 new deaths. Countywide, there are now 17,578 confirmed cases, almost 11,000 recoveries, and 399 total deaths. Out of more than 5,500 people tested yesterday, 10% were positive for COVID-19. San Diego's two-week average positive rate has risen to about 6%. So far, more than 394,000 people have been tested across the county. As new cases of coronavirus are spiking, the Trump administration is still making an all-out push to reopen schools this fall. We're very much going to put pressure on uh, governors and everybody else to open the schools. It's very important for our country. It's very important for the well-being of the student and the parents. The head of the nation's largest teachers union says the move lacks proper plans to keep students safe. Meantime, today, four states led by California Attorney General Javier Becerra sued the Trump administration over education funds. The lawsuit says the education department is forcing districts to send funds meant for low income students to private schools. Education Secretary Betsy DeVos says the funding is meant to support all students. To go or not to go, with the new school year resuming next month for most, districts across San Diego are asking parents to make up their minds quickly about their children's education plan. News 8's Lamar Abrams explains. Here in Poway, school resumes in a little over a month from now, and the district says it has to plan, giving parents until next week to make a tough choice. Send their kids back to school as COVID cases climb or keep them stuck at home.
but we are torn because either way it's not going to be easy. And Keon Salahizade was so torn about his five-year-old son's back-to-school plan to that he started a conversation with neighbors in the community. But his post on next door only highlighted the dilemma. I didn't expect that it was going to turn into this massive, you know, back and forth where, uh, you know, parents are just deb debating it with each other now. And it's a debate for families across California. Schools everywhere are giving parents options in class or at home virtual instruction. But while some have allowed a hybrid model, Poway Unified has not. It's something where the first half of the day, a certain number of kids go to school the second half of the day, the other half goes. Poway school leaders say that staggered schedule would require additional teachers, but with budgets strained, new hiring is unlikely. Where's that money going to come from hiring this many more teachers to try to do three different models of learning? We'd rather do two very well. Options even public health officials are unsure of. It really will uh, depend on the dynamics of the outbreak. And Dr. Anthony Fauci has warned lawmakers that there is no one-size-fits-all plan for returning to the classroom. While the American Academy of Pediatrics is urging a return to in-person learning, warning that lengthy time away from school often results in social isolation, putting kids at greater risk than the virus itself. I'd rather not risk it, I think, is the direction we're leaning towards. Keeping a kindergartner home for school isn't ideal for Keon and his family, but they've reasoned it's also not long term. But it's just one year out of you know, many more that he'll hopefully have in school. And if parents want to change their mind, the district says it'll let them halfway through the school year. Thank you, Lamar. Today, San Diego County supervisors approved the framework for how to spend more than $48 million in federal CARES Act money for coronavirus relief. According to the plan, $25 million will go to child care providers, almost $19 million to senior meals programs, and $5 million for a COVID testing program for K-12 schools. Chief Administrative Officer Helen Robbins-Meyer is reviewing the plan. She'll make her recommendations at the next board meeting that comes in August. Local civil rights activist Shane Harris today called on county supervisors to defend Dr. Wilma Wooten. Harris says Wooten, San Diego's public health officer, is the target of racially motivated personal attacks. There is a racial component to the fact that our county is represented by an African-American public health officer who in fact should be respected because of who she is. Recently, some have called into county press conferences to insult Wooten. One caller even gave out Wooten's home address. Harris also demanded the firing of a sheriff's deputy accused of sharing a vulgar doctored image of the killing of George Floyd last month. That deputy has already been removed from duty. The California Board of Regents made history today, appointing the first black president for the University of California system. Dr. Michael V. Drake is the former UC Irvine chancellor and just recently stepped down from his position as the head of Ohio State. News 8's Abby Alford shares how a UC San Diego ethics studies professor hopes his leadership will provide better access to underserved students. Black students and those of color here at UCSD have been calling for change, and they hope with the UC's new black president, they hope he'll hear their demands. I am Michael Drake. Dr. Michael V. Drake's California's first black University of California president replacing the state's first female president. I think it's time. Dr. Andrew Jolivet, UCSD chair of ethnic studies, says that he shares some hope in Dr. Drake. I hope that there will be some strong leadership. A lot of what I talk about in my work and lately is really, you know, trying to really think about what does transformative higher education actually really look like in times like this. And what will higher education look like during this time of civil unrest and a fight for racial equality? The UCSD Black Student Union wrote a letter to the school demanding change, uplifting black and students of color, increasing the black student population, they say, is at 3%, the lowest in the UC system. The UCSD Black Student Project echoes a similar message for Dr. Drake. Don't just bring people in because if there's not an infrastructure in place to support that, 
then folks will not be successful. Dr. Drake has served more than four decades in higher education. He was the UC Irvine Chancellor before he most recently stepped down as the head of Ohio State. He's known for bolstering access to higher education for students of all income levels and ethnic backgrounds. Governor Newsom released a statement in part, Dr. Drake possesses the demonstrated insight, experience and commitment it takes to help us continue to grow the next generation of extraordinary California leaders. Dr. Jolivet looks forward to the UC president's five to 10 year plan and policies. I hope that the new president will really think about, you know, really listen. Dr. Drake will oversee 10 campuses and five medical centers and oversee more than a half a million students and staff. All right, Abby, thanks. Stronger police accountability and oversight will be on the ballot for San Diego voters this November. Today, the city council approved a ballot amendment that would dissolve the Community Review Board on Police Practices and replace it with an independent commission made up of community members. Unlike the current board, the commission would have investigative authority and the power to issue subpoenas. The measure needs a simple majority to pass in November.